So I guess I'm going to talk about random forests, which are kind of an extension of the decision tree idea. So um, I think Graham basically uh, detailed a load of problems that decision trees have with noisy data. If you've got any noise in your data, then they love to do splits on the data that don't really make sense in the real world and will uh, they effectively overfit the high variance, low bias uh, method. So one way of solving that is to generate a bunch of these trees and average their answer out. So generally you use, uh, you've got your, got your samples set, S, and then you basically want to take a subset of the, uh, a bunch of subsets of these, this sample set, uh, SIN. How you do that is by bootstrap resampling. Is anybody? Okay, so I'll quickly. So um, imagine you've got, uh, okay, so you've got your sample set. You basically take one sample out and replace it again. So take one sample out, put it in SI, and then replace that sample back in the set and then do the same again until you've got as many samples as you want in SI. So that effectively, you're generating a new set from your original set that has the very similar statistical properties to your initial set, but it's not the same. It's not exactly the same as your initial set. What, so you take out, you take out um, a sample and mm -hmm. you mutate some of, the, some of the fields? No, 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 no mutation, just that is, that is now part of SI, and then you... You, you, sorry. sorry, so you could have the same item several mm. times? Yeah, there'd definitely be a bunch of repeats in SI okay. of the same sample. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of almost your intentions. And uh, you're sampling, are you sampling the features or are you sampling the rows or both? Both. The, yeah, uh, the feature vector and also the answer do you play you know, golf? But you're always using the whole training set, you're not. Yeah, yeah okay, so SI is generally smaller than your initial. Training set, let's say about seventy percent. Okay. So the first record in SI would that be a single record with all of the features, or, or one feature for all? Oh, of oh, a single record with all of the features. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So you use all the features all the time. Mm, mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, that's something else I'm going to get into in a bit. But just to but set for now, you're just sampling different different parts of the training set and all the features. Yeah, randomly sampling the training set. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and from these SIs, we generate like n trees for our forest. And this is going to be, uh, you know, how we construct our forest. We've got n SI, these resample training sets, and then we generate a bunch of trees from them. All the SIs are kind of different from each other in subtle ways. And so all the trees are going to be constructed differently. So like Graham said, if you had the exact same set of samples and you generated a tree, from that set of samples, you're going to get the same tree every time because, right. yeah. So that's how you get a bunch of different trees. And this, the aim of this is to solve this uh, high variance, low bias problem by having a bunch of trees generated slightly differently. You, you're going to have a bunch of different answers when you input one of your test samples to a tree. It's going to, some of them are going to spit out yes, some of them are going to spit out no, just by the way. Uh, it's constructed. And it's, it's the only, it's the only <coughs> thing you vary then the SI. You don't vary any other the, the parameters of the actual algorithm. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the, you, you generally construct every tree in the same way. You, right. you don't want to have any variance in how you construct the tree itself. But you do, uh, before you construct the tree, you actually do take a random <laughs> subset of the features to construct the tree. You don't ever always. Uh, use all the features weirdly. Like let's say you only use half the half of the features in each tree, and this is to again stop uh, the the trees kind of all looking the same. Because even if you have got even if SI is slightly different than the initial sample, it's still going to have a lot of the same properties, and the trees are still going to generally be formed in the same way. But if you eliminate half the features, it might sound weird eliminating half the features, but if you do that, then they're almost guaranteed to be different. Uh, and kind of looking at a different subspace of the problem. Um, so, so one tree will have one set of feet, one half of the features, and one tree will have a different. Yeah, a random. A, a, a different yeah, yeah. Again, subset. it's random again. So it's, okay. it's it's not like you. This this one tree is going to have the first five features in your feature vector, and the next one's going to have the next five. It's completely random. So will there be features. any trees that have all of them? No. Okay. 
there, there's no one tree that will have all of them. Right. Um, so with that, you basically, when you want to answer a question with this new forest model, you uh, to get the answer f, let's call it, you basically just sum up all of your fi's, which is your answers. Uh, for each individual tree, that's the, that's the answer for each individual tree, or the probability of it being class one, um, and then just average it effectively, uh, and that give you your probability that it is. You know, you should play golf on this day or whatnot. Um, the why this is kind of going in the opposite direction of what we want to do is you lose interpretability now because you've got in this forest you've got like hundred or so trees, right? Um, so how do you get back to the interpretability? Um, and that's kind of what I also wanted to talk about today, and I've kind of been thinking about that, and looking up uh, the best methods of doing so. So, um, I, I thought two ways. I, I found this uh, paper on, like, could I get a new page? I don't know if I need it, but... Um, So there was this paper online that detailed a method of constructing a meta tree from your forest. So basically their idea was you generate a bunch of random new examples. These are now, like you say, uh, Pete, when you were saying before, these are like new features, you know, these are unseen examples. Now you do generate a bunch of unseen examples. And you send them through each of your, you know, if you've got a bunch of trees, You've got a bunch of trees with some answers out. You, you generate the samples in such a way that, and you throw away ones that don't meet this criteria, that you end up with equal number of leaf, leaf nodes being populated by it. So let's say you send one sample down here and it goes, ends up on this leaf node, and another one down here, you want, let's say, five ending up on each leaf node okay, of each tree. And what this is effectively doing, this new data set you've generated is effectively, it's a data set that represents the rule set of the tree, but in, in data form almost. It's, it's, it's perfect data that perfectly represents this rule set of this tree. And what you do now with that data, uh, you've, gen you've done this for each tree by the way, each tree in the forest now has this randomly generated data set with it. You shove this data back in to your main data set and then retrain with the exact same algorithm you trained your other trees on a new tree and this new tree has the properties of all the individual trees in your forest or some maintain some of the properties at least and but there's also a single tree which is way more interpretable for humans you know you can see where, where your answer is going down the uh, the alternative, I'm sorry, yeah, sure. Sorry. Um, is there any, because just going back a little bit, so you've got N trees or mm -hmm. family trees, presumably some of those trees are going to be more successful, mm -hmm. more accurate than other trees. Yeah. Um, is, is there like learning that's done where you apply a lower weight to those and a higher yeah, weight to the more successful ones? Yeah, the, yeah, this was also in the um, methods I was, I was thinking about using. Yeah, you're exactly right, there are algorithms that look for the optimal tree yeah. to answer your question. They learn what is the optimal tree to answer the question given a particular uh, feature vector or, or particular input data. So again, you, you've almost got another meta-learning algorithm on top of yeah. the forest that chooses which tree in the forest or which bunch of trees in the forest to seek the answer for. Yeah, um, yeah so yeah, that is a method you could go down. Um, but you still kind of, it's, it's still got some of the pathologies because you pick out only a single tree of, of you know, that tree could just be noisy, you know, you, you, there's still problems with it. But, um, so the, the, the second thing is, I mean, we could just have our forest and then look, you can extract the decision path that each sample as they went down the tree took. So we could try to extract a meta rule set that 
a single sample you sent down the tree went. Okay, so like for example, uh, it might go down a tree, and one of the questions might be, is the transfer value above 50k? And then later on down it, uh, or down another tree, it might ask the question, is the transfer value above 100k? And the answer is yes as well. So you've got these two conflicting rules. Obviously, you you want the more specific one related to your sample, so you start eliminating these rule sets, and then you build up this meta rule set of all, all the uh, individual rules, individual steps on the nodes, uh, and then that's the thing we output in our, uh, our end system to construct our you know, auto-generated report. I don't know which is the best solution. I'm dubious of this one somewhat, because uh, I've, I've read the paper, but I've never seen it applied anywhere. Nobody's made any you know, uh, yeah, use of it, it seems, so I don't know if it works very well. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit dubious of the second one, because yeah. you then just stated a bunch of facts about the vector you've input. So you said, okay, in this vector, is greater than 100, but so what? So you just uh, yeah, yeah, well, well, so oh, okay, yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, well, okay, so this is, this would be used in conjunction of, um, one we could, uh, okay, so we need to think about first how the features look when we input them into the model. Uh, I, you could just leave them as normal numbers, or you could say, uh, or we, we could have a bunch of decisions whether that's a high transfer value, right? Like, it's relative to, it could be relative to the, to the training sample set. This one is, so could say, you know, we could say high. Because it's high. Then yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're thinking about it in the stage of the next stage where you, you've got a load of these thresholds, and then you want to generate a report from it. And and that that stage is yeah, it's going to be somewhat tricky to think about. But I think it's definitely doable to say, oh, that's a high transfer value because we'll have statistics on what. We have to do that for each and for each. Yeah, uh, each and each. Have to do yeah. that. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I mean, like, or, or you know, think well, not by feature, we'd have to do it. So you, you, you've got one case that's come in, you've seen where it goes down, you've mm. extracted the most specific constraints, and then mm. we'd have to programmatically explain those constraints. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, once once we've uh, refined the constraints, you know, from all, because you get, yeah, okay, um, yeah, that's effectively, the. I mean, the tree, the random forest sound, that bigger deal after you and understand what a decision tree is. So. That's that's what a random forest is and cool. how I think the solution. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you.